All right, guys, so this is actually a teardown I'm gonna do of this box. Now this box, I've actually already done this once just to literally see if it was worth doing a video about because the catch is these boxes don't actually belong to yourself. They actually are rented effectively. So this is property of Sky. So I didn't want to get into it. Now the old boxes are an absolute um, nightmare to get into. So I had a quick gander. The reason why I had a gander is I no longer have Sky Q. Um, it's come to the end of its contracts and I just don't watch it enough. I'm at work most of the time and Freeview does a lot of the channels I want to watch. So for the time being, just for now, I decided to uh, send it back. It's £30 extra I'm saving, so I thought, why not? So I thought before I send it back, I'd have a quick play and see what is inside these because they are very advanced boxes for what they do. Um, and they are actually really easy to get into. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like internally. Now, this Sky Q box is immaculate, you can see. No marks, I look after my kit anyway, but I'm just a guided tour. Now, obviously, on the right there is your viewing card slot. On the top is, uh, that is actually a button, that Q. So if you lose your remote, if you press it, uh, it is actually a clicky button. And it, it obviously, your controller is Bluetooth. So it actually sends a signal for this, and this starts playing a little noise and you can really fo find your uh, remote very quickly. Infrared, and you've also got the record button and also WPS button. That is actually um, not the record button, pardon. It's uh, your power button. Your record button is there. This lights up red when it's recording, and when you're playing back, this goes around in a blue light. On the rear is obviously the main bit. This is where all your ports are. Now, that's ventilation, because that is pretty much where the hard drive sits. You've got an optical out, two USBs, HDMI, Ethernet, and satellite input, and obviously your power input. Obviously, you'll have to excuse the dust. It does pretty much sit still where it is. You can see the model there is an ES-130. So, to take this apart is actually very easy. So, first things first, you want to flip it upside down. Now, you can see, obviously, we've got the grills on the top here for ventilation. There is no, there is one little fan in there, which to be fair, I've never heard. I don't, don't actually know whether they use it, but it's actually here in between this bracket. And I think it basically pushes air from the hard drive out and then out, but there is no fan on top of the heat sink. Now this box does get very hot. Um, not dangerously hot, but it does get noticeably hot. And I also would say that about the SkyQ hub also gets very hot. Again, Obviously, I think it's basically, I think for the tolerance, I think it's on that point where I think they really should put a fan in it. But obviously, it must be safe because they deploy them and there's no drama. So you can see the heatsink underneath. That's going to be the main CPU. But to get into it, it's really easy. So first things first, you get one little screw. Now, it is one of those odd looking fixtures. You can see it's a star head, which luckily I had. So once you've taken that out, there's two clips. And then we literally clip it out and boom, you've got your hard drive. Now, there is a little clip here, which you can see pushes in. You basically push this in and push the hard drive back, which will then release it. You can then take the hard drive out as you please. And you can obviously see here, it's the SATA connection. Now, this hard drive is a Western Digital, so it's a two terabyte, 3.5 inch hard drive. Now, hard drive wise, there's the model. It's probably gonna be, you can see it's just a green powered one, um, which are, I'll have to double check on this, but there is obviously different variants of hard drives. Now this isn't a NAS specific one, it's not a video specific one. That's the model, it may be a video one. I'd have to double check that. I'll, I'll let you know at the end of the video but it is green power, it is a WD. Not sure if they use this on absolutely every single box, but that's what I've got in here. Now, one thing I am gonna try, as the hard drive is accessible, doesn't say don't do it, is whether actually you could put a bigger hard drive in and it would format it and recognize that. Now, luckily, I have four terabyte Western Digital upstairs. It is a NAS drive, which I don't think is gonna be a problem. Uh, they're basically optimized for constant use, so as very much like this drive here is, constant use when it's recording. So that'll be interesting, we'll have a look at that. So we're gonna put that aside. Obviously it's got its own mount, but it's just Phillips spruce, so it'd be quite easy to get rid of and get out. 
Now, the rest of it is very straightforward. Now, I'm going to try and do this one handy because I haven't got my tripod with me today. Um, but basically, all I did was pretty much start prying this plastic off. And now, again, I didn't do it forcefully. I just kind of tested the waters. Now, you can hear it click out. And if this little bit of plastic then basically just comes apart like so. Again, just a little bit of plastic which covers this. And this then just exposes a bit more plastic tabbing. And the easiest way to get into this is actually to pry it just here. Now here is a clip. So if you basically put your thumb and just try and pull it over the USBs, like so you can see. Now I'm doing this one-handed. I'm obviously holding oh I'm obviously holding my iPhone with my other hand. But you can see, I'm just gonna put the iPhone down for two seconds. And there we go. Literally, it doesn't take a lot of force, look. And then this will literally just pop off like so. That's it. There is no clips holding it in. So you can see here is just the rear, this is the case, nothing holding it in. Now, there was four screws, which I did forget to mention. They sit in each corner pretty much. They were a little bit tough to get out. They're just standard cross, uh, just cross, I suppose. That's what they call them. Um, so they were quite easy to get in. Uh, here are the screws themselves. So nothing too dramatic. And that is literally all what's holding it. And you get full access to the drive, which I'm really surprised at. Because the, the HD boxes are an absolute nightmare to get into. So I'm really surprised at this. this really surprised. Really pleasantly surprised. So you can see here, this is obviously where the hard drive sits. Um, it's obviously got its own little mounting mechanism to keep it nice and still, which is cool. And obviously you see down here is the SATA connector. And obviously that then goes over to the main board there, so that's nice. And um, you can see here, there's a very, very small little fan. Um, and again, where the casing sits onto it, this is obviously separated in two halves. So maybe that sucks the air from the hard drive passes it over the heatsink and then obviously out it goes, but not too much cooling going on. And obviously the main components are obviously here at the back. So you've obviously got HDMI and there's your Ethernet. Um, and then obviously here, this is the satellite signals. Obviously it's a twin feed, um, but obviously you can record more than two. So it's got a bit of a heatsink. So I presume these get quite hot, obviously. So that's obviously uh, protected there by the heatsink. And then obviously we've got various electronic components down here. Couldn't ask me what they are because I'm not 100% sure. But you can see here, um, weird looking stuff, but obviously it does stuff. You can obviously see the Sky model there. Another heat sink there, obviously passive, just metal cooling. And obviously this is where the main CPU is going to sit itself. So pretty beefy. I'm not going to bother taking the hard, all this casing apart because it really is no relevance, to be honest. It's just going to be pretty much exactly the same underneath. It's probably just a big metal heat sink, to be honest. Um, and it's the same with this, so these again are quite easy to take apart normally. But again, I'm not going to bother because it's not mine and it's, it's going back. If it was my own, it was out of warranty, I'd probably have a bit more of a play. Um, but I'm not too fussed at the moment. Now, what I am going to do is actually going to go and plug it in. Obviously, I'm not going to touch any internals while it's plugged in. I am just going to see whether that fan does kick into action um, and see how the Skybox responds to having no hard drive inserted. Um, and then I am going to go and get a four terabyte drive and see if we can initialize it and then make use of it pretty much. So, right, so uh, I have plugged it in. Um, I've just plugged the power in and the um, HDMI. Now on the screen, we've basically just telling us you know, it's going to be a couple of minutes. So that's kind of the standard boot screen. So probably the operating system is probably stored on here somewhere. There is probably some memory chips either on the reverse or under that heat sink, which is potentially where it's been held. Uh, I can't see any obvious storage chips on here, but again, not 100%. Now, the fan does actually spin, which I'm really surprised at. Now, it's very quiet. Um, there is actually a fan just above me on the PS4, which is probably what you're hearing. So that isn't this speed, so it's very quiet. I can't, I really can't see it doing a lot, to be honest, but there we go. So, now, this was factory reset before I, I went anyway. So... It's going to kind of probably go through this. Now, it has just gone blank. Whether it's just realised there's no hard drive, I'm not 100% sure. Um, you can see here that the it's gone yellow. Don't know why it's gone yellow. Maybe it's 
is going to struggle about its hard drive. So this is in, oh no, aha, now, this is good. So it has recognized the Rusnow hard drive. So I'm going to go and grab my four terabyte one and see what happens. Okay, so this is my four terabyte. Now you can see it's got NASware. And all that means is it is designed for a NAS. So performance wise is, oh, I don't really see it going to be a difference. So we are going to just line that up. And just make sure that connection is going to be made. So we just slot it in. Now I can hear the drive spinning up. They are quiet drives, so they don't spin quite as quick. Now what's probably going to happen is these boxes are going to reset, or it's going to uh, do something on the screen at the moment. Nothing too dramatic is happening. So I'm going to reboot this because I don't think it's going to do anything now. And we're going to see what happens. Okay, so rebooted it, and you can see it says hard drive error. Now, this probably needs to be formatted, to be honest. So, what I'm going to do is uh, we're just going to press exit and see what happens. Now, for some reason, the remote isn't responding to the box, which is a bit odd. So, I'm going to have a bit of a play and see what I can do. Okay, so what I've managed to do, I've managed to power, I think the remote was unpaired, so I've paired that back. Uh, now, obviously, there's no satellite connection plugged in. As you can see, I've still got it HDMI and parallel. So, what we're going to do is format the drive to see if it works. So, we're going to go highlight settings, and then we're going to use the hidden engineers menu, which is 001 select. If I could do it one handed, I would be a better man. It's going to then warn us the settings should only be changed if you are instructed by Sky. It's fine. We're going to go reset, and then reset hard drive. It's going to say, obviously it's going to delete things, that's fine. Are you want to continue? Yes. So, we've now instructed the box to format this hard drive. So, I'm optimistic and I reckon it might work to be fair. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Now it's a four terabyte drive which is double uh, of the old drive. So that would be obviously a lot more storage which is great. Um, especially if you do a lot of this buy and keep with Sky, which is pretty good to be fair. So you buy a film, it would cost you very similar to what you would get if you bought it off Amazon or something. Uh, the box is just rebooted, so come back on in just a moment. Um, and then basically you can download a copy to your hard drive. Now, HD films are obviously, you're looking at four, five gig HD. So all adds up, and obviously the more storage, and if you plan on keeping this long term and you buy a lot of films, then, you know, if you could upgrade this hard drive, that would actually be a really ace thing to do, I think, on Sky's part. Because um, that's normally what runs out, and obviously people who do a lot of recordings, like families, and you can download box sets. You can download pretty much all the Game of Thrones if you're a Sky customer and you've got the box set bundle. So all these, as you know, add up. So if you can slap a four terabyte hard drive in, or even bigger. Now I don't know if there is any limitation. I am doing this live with you guys now. I just my own curiosity got the better of me, and that's why I wanted to try it. Um, so we're just going to hopefully see what happens. Now this heat sink here is getting warm but not too bad. So we are now back at the boot screen. So we're going to press home. Now I have a fit. Oh no, it has done it. Cool. Let's see what's happening. So it's gonna. It's gone back into its little moment again. This is what it did last time. So I think it's just literally getting itself ready. Um, hopefully, there's no errors with the hard drive. So it's not come back on just yet. So I'm just going to prompt it. It has gone yellow. And let's just see what happens. And then we're on green. Oh, hard disk error. There is still an issue. Now, I'm actually wondering whether it's this hard drive. Because this hard drive did come up with some smart errors when it was in my NAS. So, I haven't got another hard drive. I can, uh, I can try. I have got another one here. Just another generic just Toshiba one. This has no errors. Uh, this I've just taken out, so I'm going to try this okay, one. So, with this one terabyte hard drive, which I know works fine, did the exact same thing, went through settings, reset the hard drive, and this time, there's no error on the hard drive, which, so, I do think it was just because my known issue with my hard drive was a problem. So, with this... There is no way, unfortunately, to get it to tell me how much storage I have. But I'm fairly confident 
that this has now using this hard drive. Obviously there is no recordings. So, conclusion, I am fairly confident that you can pop any hard drive you want into these skyboxes. Now, this hard drive is one terabyte. The one I took out is a one terabyte. Uh, I actually thought it was a two terabyte, but that's actually the SkyQ silver box which does that. So, I've had a look at this hard drive and it is what I thought it was. It's a special hard, well I say special. There's different groups of hard drives. You've got your traditional just desktop ones for computers. And then there's a couple more, such as NAS drives, um, ones for constant access. So this is actually classed as a CCTV one. So basically a very high, intense read and write action. That's obviously when it's recorded and playing back video live. So that's what this is. Um, you can get them and pick them up quite cheap. It's got IntelliPower, which basically keep it fluctuates the speed. So it can be 5, 400 RPM or 7, 200. That's pretty cool. But I'm fairly confident, guys, that you can do upgrade these hard drives. Be interesting to see. Unfortunately, my four terabyte drive uh, has got issues, and that's why that was causing issues with the box itself. Um, I don't think I've got any other hard drive which are any bigger on that, unfortunately, to test that. But I'm fairly confident there would be no dramas. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for watching, guys. This was a pure experiment to see what kind of functionality you can get at these hard drives now obviously the hard drive is one screw and you can get access to it um, the steps you need to do are in this video but basically you need to get into the engineers mode and format it and obviously off you go but yeah thanks for watching any uh, questions let me know okay guys and that pretty much completes the video now as you can see it's all back together you wouldn't even know it'd been open now the purpose of this video was just to demonstrate that Indeed, you can actually just put another hard drive in. So, like me, I've got a few desktop hard drives lying around. Obviously, this is under warranty, so Sky would actually do that for you anyway. Um, now, upgradability, I wouldn't, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to test it because I don't have Sky subscription anymore. My suspicions would be there is probably a limit on, or they've put a limiter on how much storage you can have. So, it might recognise four terabytes, but actually, it might cap it at two terabytes it's a real difficult question and unfortunately i can't answer this the main purpose of this video was to show you what it looks like internally um, and the hard drive bit was more speculation now i've confirmed that you can put another hard drive in and as long as you format it you can use it because it didn't come up with any errors and it was ready to go would have been interesting to see if my four terabyte drive worked and i did have sky whether i would be able to utilize the whole storage array unfortunately there's no easy way to find out how much storage you actually have on these boxes um, but it just gives you a percentage bar at the top it doesn't say you've got four terabytes etc so this is a risky thing to do you know I, I don't recommend it because no doubt sky probably know if you are a subscriber what you're doing with your box it wouldn't surprise me and there is a lot of speculation online about this but nevertheless it was an interesting thing to do and i'm, I'm happy i did it so any questions guys do let me know and i'll try and answer them as best as i can. Let's be a look at the SkyQ internals and hard drive upgradability.